of Africa, surrounded by creatures great and small. He lives at a private game lodge managed by his father Peter, a place where animals are free to roam and live as nature intended. A place where people are the guests of dedicated rangers whose sole purpose is the conservation of nature's way and the children of Africa. Here the animals are not confined to cages so they have to be sought and found wherever they have chosen to wander. The game is tracked down on foot by Shangan trackers, some of the finest still living. This helps to preserve the traditional skills and cultures, for tracking is a dying art in Africa. Most of these trackers learnt their trade as poachers and have happily turned their crafts to good use. They have an abundance of knowledge to pass on to those who will listen. Christopher's friend Robert is the son of Winnes Matabula, who worked with the great James Stevenson Hamilton, the first warden of the Kruger National Park. Once big game has been located, the position is noted and their condition is checked by the rangers as part of the conservation and care of the area. Lions are Africa's greatest attraction. It is the job of the male to protect the territory, securing a safe area for the females to hunt and breed. The males pair off with the female when she comes into estrus. Mating can occur over 100 times in a period of three to five days. The cubs being born some three and a half months later. Litters of six cubs are not unusual and competition for milk is keen as the mother possesses only four teats. The cubs will suckle from any lactating female, so increasing the chances of survival. In spite of this, only 30% of all cubs can expect to reach maturity. This cub is suffering from a crippling bone disease and has no chance of survival. The mother is torn between the desperate plight of the crippled cub and the need to move the pride on. Nature protects the species, not the individual. After six weeks, the cubs, although still suckling, begin feeding off the kills and by three months are fully weaned. From this giraffe kill, more than just the lions will benefit. For 
Chris and Robert, it's a wonderful lesson of how nature makes full use of its resources as vultures and hyenas scavenge off the carcass. The double-edged molars at the back of the powerful jaws enable hyenas to crush the bones and thus extract more from the carcass than any other predators. Contrary to popular belief as a ruthless killer, the wild dog is rated as one of the most efficient of all the predators. Highly intelligent, they rely on teamwork to run down their prey. It is generally believed that the prey goes into a state of shock when chased and possibly doesn't feel any pain when it is brought down. In times of plenty, food is abundant for prey and predator alike. But drought can have a devastating effect as animals feed off the sparse vegetation and congregate around the last remaining water. Adaptation is a prerequisite for survival, and the animals surviving in Africa today are those that have come to terms with her harsh requirements. As the water dries up, weakened animals become trapped in the mud. Game ranges are tested to the full in their attempts to pull the diminishing populations through these critical periods. Warthogs, normally grazers, are forced to scavenge off carcasses in order to survive. For the first time in his young life, Chris realizes that water is life and Africa is harsh. At last, rain returns to drench the thirsty land, replenishing the rivers and dams, and life returns to the system. For the crocodile, water is the environment in which he has lived for over 100 million years and is certainly one of the oldest and most successful species on Earth. Like all reptiles, a crocodile cannot generate its own body heat and therefore they spend long hours basking in the sun. And by opening their jaws, they allow the air to pass over a membrane in the mouth to cool the body down again. Hippo are a vital component of a river's ecology. Their movements over the river beds stir up food for the fish and also keep the silt moving. 
Intensely territorial, the bulls fight aggressively to establish dominance and can inflict serious wounds which sometimes result in death. The combination of grass and woodland in Africa supports a dazzling array of species unsurpassed anywhere else in the world. Browsing and grazing at different levels, each species complements the other in a successful symbiotic relationship, finely balanced by evolution. The elephant grazes the coarser grasses, as do the large herds of buffalo, shortening it for the zebra, wildebeest, impala, warthog and white rhino, which benefit from the varying levels. The fork-tailed drongo and virtual starling feed off insects disturbed by the grazing animals. Amongst the leaf eaters, similar feeding levels exist, ensuring maximum utilization of food supply. Pushing over of trees by elephants is not always destructive. Trees pushed down a slope combat erosion, and the shorter browsers benefit from the lowered succulent leaves. Elephants open up heavily wooded areas in this way, giving access to other animals. Fallen trees can also improve and promote grass cover by protecting the seed beds from grazing. Elephants have a working tusk, which is used for stripping bark, an essential part of their diet. This tree has been ring barked and is vulnerable to borer beetle it will eventually die. Pips and seeds passed through dung have an excellent chance of germinating and so the cycle of reforestation is completed. Even in the dung beetle world, competition is tough. Leopards are arguably the most beautiful of Africa's predators, and certainly one of the most elusive. There are several differences between leopards and cheetahs. Leopards hunt the riverine bush, whilst cheetah prefer the open grasslands.
later have single spots and a tear line which cuts down the glare. The leopard has rosette spots and deadly pale eyes that seem to stare right through you. The cheetah has non-retractable claws, rather like the spikes of a sprinter's shoes, whilst the leopard's claws are typically cat and retractable, unsheathed when climbing or hoisting its kill. The flat tail of the cheetah acts as a rudder to turn at high speed. The long tail of the leopard acts as a counterbalance, making them very agile in the trees. All cats are meticulously clean to avoid infection from parasites and spend several hours a day grooming. Both leopard and cheetah like to perch on termite mounds to watch for potential prey. Cheetah have large home ranges, whilst leopards are more localised. Both use scent markings to mark out their territories. The cheetah's call is a high-pitched chirp, rather like that of a bird, whilst the leopard's call is a rasping, sawing sound. Cheetahs have black and white tips to their tails, whereas the leopards are distinctly white. These are certainly flight mechanisms, allowing cubs to follow the mother more easily. The cheetah is the fastest animal in the world, reaching speeds in excess of 100 kilometers per hour. However, they're only able to maintain this for a distance of 200 meters or so. They also require their prey to flee for their efforts to be successful. In this case, the warthog has turned to face the danger and the cheetah is reluctant to attack as it could be severely injured by those sharp tusks. Cheetah feed rapidly, as other predators frequently rob them of their kills. Leopards avoid competition from other predators by hoisting their kills high into the trees, where they can feed at leisure over several days. Only lion on rare occasions can rob a leopard of its kill. Nature's rules are harsh, and there is no place for the sick, weak or infirm. This lame zebra is quickly disposed of. We must ask ourselves what the future is for the last remaining wild areas in Africa. The wild animals are not here by chance. They have met Africa's harsh requirements and survived.
They're a priceless asset, which we have a responsibility to conserve and pass on to future generations. By the year 2000, it is estimated that 276 million people will have been added to Africa's population. The question is, under this relentless pressure, will any wildlife survive? For these animals have nowhere left to go. travel from all over the world to view and learn about the wildlife of Africa. Conservation is not the preservation of the last gasping rhino. It is the protection of ecosystems from which all life springs. Will the children of Africa see a cheetah running through the grass? A leopard with her cubs? An elephant roaming the plains of Africa. Extinction is forever. You're the children of Africa. You are part of this land. You'll stay here, you were born here You must work hand in hand, hand in hand You must learn each other's cultures, language and ways You must work together in all so many ways They're the children of Africa they're living on borrowed time Their future's in your hands Their future's in mine Mantuana ho Africa Lohania Lizwenya Hosanna Sebenza Hosangwen, Hosangwen You were born amongst the creatures Such beauty, great and small And you must learn their habits Keep them safe forevermore They're children of Africa They're living on borrowed time Their future's in your hands Their future's in mine Their futures in your 